This is on the East Fork of the Millicoma. So it's in the Coos River system on the Millicoma Fork. And then we're on the East Fork of, of the Millicoma River. Um, and this is an area called Nasika Park. It's a Coos County Park. It's real accessible to the public for fishing. And it is one of the areas where we acclimate some of our steelhead smolts in this area. We release the smolts here. So those adult fish, when they come back, they should be keying in on uh, coming back here to the Nasika Park area. And uh, that's exactly why we put the hatchery fish out here is for people to catch. So tell me a little bit about this setup. Well, what I've got rigged up here right now is a bobber and jig uh, setup. So I have a, a sliding bobber stop that's up here at the top. I can slide that up and down and that'll stop where my bobber goes when, uh, when it floats up. So if I want to fish four feet of water, probably about what I have right now, I have my bobber stop set up here. That's about four feet down to my jig. So when I go ahead and cast, the bobber stop goes through the eyes of your fishing rod. So you can reel right up to the bobber and then cast. You have to kind of look at the river, kind of watch it and see how, if the jig is bouncing the bottom, that might be a little too deep. Or if I don't think I'm fishing down near the bottom, I would make the bobber stop a little deeper. Um, but uh, basically there's, it's also a swivel on here that stops the bobber from going down so that there's about a 20 inch leader down to my jig. So the minimum I'm gonna be fishing if I were to put my bobber stop right up against the bobber would be about 20 inches or so. On this setup, you're not going to you're not going to snag the bottom very much, you know, as long as you keep adjusting your bobber stop for the spot that you are in the river. Um, this is kind of a an easy set up for beginners to use because you don't hang up on the bottom as much as drift fishing uh, with drift fishing being where you're bouncing a weight along the bottom and you have a, a leader that's fishing uh, down there right right in the rocks or in the bottom and you tend to snag up quite a bit but with this a lot of times if your bobber goes under um, that can be a fish so drift fishing the, the bite is a lot more subtle with this if you see your bobber go under you're going to set the hook if it's real clear, a lot of times on the jigs, I'll go with a, uh, with like a black jig, uh, which is more of a natural, almost looks kind of like a bug instead. When there's a little color to the water like there is today, I might use the pink or sometimes the real bright orange. Um, if there's not as much current, maybe I'm only using an eighth of an ounce jig, but this is a quarter. I like a quarter because it, it hangs down straighter. As, the, as your gear is going down river, you don't want the the jig to be trying to swing up to the top. You want it hanging straight down if you can. And then you match the size of your bobber to, uh, to the jig that you have on. Sometimes if my jig is not heavy enough and it's not uh, making the, the bobber ride straight up and down, sometimes your bobber will just want to lay over. Um, I, w I might add right under that swivel, uh, a couple of uh, split shot just to keep the the line hanging as straight down as possible. So this is going to fish on the bottom instead of the bobber. This is going to bounce along the bottom. So I have a, from my main line, I come down to a three-way swivel and I've tied just a little piece of scrap line on. It's about two and a half, three inches long. And, and uh, that's where I'll put my weight. And then my leader, this is again about 18 to 20 inches long. I've got it going down to a hook that I have snelled myself. I've got the, the hook rigged up so that I can pull that back and I can throw an egg loop. So I can pull this forward, put eggs in there if I wanted to, then pull it tight, put eggs or sand shrimp, some kind of bait. I have yarn in there. When I snelled it, it snelled right into the knot. And that yarn, a lot of people say, you know, it helps to catch their their teeth. So, you know, if they grab a hold of something, but they're going to spit it out, maybe that yarn gives you an extra second to react, uh, set the hook. Then I have a, what I'm fishing here is a bead. This is a, 
kind of a bouncing bead and it's uh, just slightly uh, negatively buoyant. So it's gonna bounce the bottom, but it's not, it's not weighted. And this one is kind of rubbery. It's a, just a brand that makes one, uh, some of them are hard beads. Some of them that they make are neutrally buoyant, so they'll actually float more. This one will just uh, slightly bounce bottom. And I've got it pegged up here a couple inches, uh, which is something that's come on in the last few years. It used to be we'd fish the Corkies or Okies or those different brands uh, of things that imitate an egg. You'd fish them so they slide right down to your hook. Uh, some people uh, recently have come up with kind of pegging it a little bit. You can put a toothpick in there or um, put something in there that keeps that from sliding down. I can actually move it up and down a little bit. Um, and then uh, this will bounce along the bottom. So depending on the river flow and the depth, um, how much water's moving out there, I'll. I'll go ahead and get a weight and uh, put that on here so that when I cast this out, it'll, it'll be bouncing along the bottom. And you want it to be, you don't want it to just be stopping all the time. You want it to kind of tap, tap, tap every once in a while so you know that you're right down along the bottom. But um, you you'd still want it to drift along so that this uh, looks like a natural egg that's just floating down the river in front of a steelhead's face. A lot of times the snags will change from year to year. So there may be something out there, a tree came down, uh, there's lots of things. Maybe there's a gravel bar that I don't know about or, or a rock has been exposed. And so even though I've fished this spot quite a bit, there may be a, there may be a snag out there that I don't know about. So I just tied on a spinner. This is another way that you could fish for steelhead. And uh, this basically will cast along and will actually bounce it along the bottom, similar to the drift fishing gear. But uh, then uh, I'll be putting a little tension on it every once in a while so that the blade will flutter. And But you still want it to be fluttering along the bottom. So hopefully it gets right down in their living room where the steelhead are and comes down right in front of their face. Um, but that's a spinner. We've also got some spoons here, a few different colors different sizes um, same thing we'll cast that out and just kind of drift it along the bottom let it bounce along i'll be putting a little more tension on the line if it uh if it's getting hung up too much in the bottom i'll keep a little more tension on it so it's still fluttering downstream but try to keep it up off the bottom